Hi, I'd like to talk about intermittent fasting. Nothing else I do in the protocol will work for my Parkinson's disease if I don't fast overnight and remain fasted during the exercise and when I take the buttered coffee. So why is the buttered coffee allowed during the fast? Isn't that eating? Isn't that breaking the fast? There are reasons why the coffee does not break the fast. It has to do with the differences between a fed state and a fasted state. This diagram shows the important shifts in the nutrients carried by the blood to and from various organs in the fed state versus the fasted state. All the blue arrows show the direction of those nutrients in the fasted state. In the fasted state, your body taps into the fats and carbohydrates that are stored in your body. All the red arrows show the direction those nutrients flow in the fed state. In the fed state, you're using the digested nutrients in food and storing fats and storing glycogen. Glycogen is the storage form of glucose or carbohydrates. Eating fats won't shift you from the fasted state to the fed state. If you take high fats in your diet, you can make your body go into a state that is like the fasted state. If I take carbohydrates like sports drinks before I exercise, the direction of all the arrows changes and the blue arrows become red arrows, and the exercise doesn't do what it normally does for my Parkinson's symptoms. So you stop eating in the evening and you don't eat until lunchtime. There will be times when I don't follow this step. The night before last, I ate some ice cream when I should have been fasting. So what do you do if you break the protocol? What you need to do is write down what you ate for a snack and the time you ate it. That way you can look at your symptoms the next day and see if breaking the fast caused you any problems the next day. You'll find that your body adapts to the fasting. Mark Matson indicated in his book that it can take 30 days for your body to adapt. I don't get hungry unless I start to eat carbs during the fasting portion of the day. Try it for yourself. Force yourself to fast for 16 or more hours at night and in the morning. Give yourself 10 days to adapt and see if you stop getting hungry when you have been fasting. Be sure to record when you stop eating and when you start and write down any snack you eat. The continuous glucose monitoring is going to pick it up anyway. We want to learn as much as possible about why it may be difficult for some people to fast. It is something that can be worked on with the coach or a peer support or advice from the nutritionist. That's what you need to know about intermittent fasting. If you've watched all five videos in this playlist, you should be ready to get started. If you're watching these videos and you are not part of the clinical trial, be sure to check with your doctor before starting these lifestyle changes.